Hi, this is Phil here from Phil's Random Stuff channel. Now today I'm going to be talking to you about electric over hydraulic disc brakes. Pros and cons, I guess, and what it's going and actually how to install them, I should say, on your van. Now in Australia it's pretty common to run your standard electric drum brake setup. These things are cheap, you know, about four to five hundred dollars a side for your van, but you know, if you do a lot of dirt, um, dirt miles, driving down dirt roads, they don't last very well. They wear out quite quickly. I've done a video on that, so go watch that and you'll have an understanding of why I'm over having to maintain these things. Now, hopefully switching to disc brakes will reduce my maintenance, give me better braking, and um, just simplify the whole thing. Servicing, uh, you know, instead of having to pull the whole assembly apart, it's just unbolt the caliper and change the pads, put it back on. Um, now, one of the big disadvantages of electric over, hydric, electric over hydraulic disc brakes, I'll get it out, is the cost. Now, this isn't cheap. Uh, now, you're going to be spending between two and a half and three thousand dollars Australian to do one axle. So, you know, um, it's not something you want to go and go, oh, great, I'll rush in to do this. It really is quite expensive. And the reason being why you don't see it on many caravans nowadays at all. It is coming a bit more popular as the components are now getting cheaper. Um, now to give you an idea of what the components cost, I guess the caliper, the mounting brackets, the 12 inch two ton uh, bearing rotor. Um, and so this comes as a kit. I'll get it out of myself, get, get it said right. Uh, comes with a kit. Everything you see here except for the electric hydraulic control unit uh, was about a thousand dollars so that's pretty reasonably priced. The killer is the electric hydraulic control units. Now they range between a thousand and about fourteen hundred dollars or more depending on how flash you want to go with them. Um, I've gone with the HydroPro unit. It cost me about uh, one thousand and forty dollars to in um, delivered to my home. Um, from HydroPro in Australia, so it's it's you know it's probably one of the cheaper ones on the market. It's German made, so hopefully it should be right. Um, it's quite small; it's about ten inches long and about four inches wide. Um, so we're really um, quite good for me because I'm going to be mounted internally in the van. You can mount these things externally on the drawbar or wherever. Um, so the calipers are a Dexter brand. Um, Dexter brand UFP 35 caliper, suited for a 12 inch rotor. Uh, they require about 1600 PSI pressure to operate, so you've got to buy the right pressure rating uh, actuator unit. And they come loaded with a new set of pads, obviously, and they actually have an integrated park brake. Now this is the biggest thing that becomes a difficulty when you're actually going to disc brakes is what to do about a park brake. Now there's two ways that you can do it, go about it. You can buy one something like this with the integrated park brake lever, or you put just a straight hydraulic caliper on there and then a manual override style disc brake caliper hooked to your handbrake lever. So you'll have two calipers mounted on your actual stub shaft. Um, and it actually works at about the same price as buying one of these. Okay, these are close to um, $300, two, $200, um, $220 each, $250 um, Australian. So it gives you, a, there, there's, there's a fair bit of money in them. Uh, the kit, now let's talk about the kit. This was really hard. I rang a lot of, um, I rang Elko two or three times. They were pretty well of zero help. I rang trailer part supply mobs. I had them, some of them telling, don't go to disc brakes, it's a waste of money, it's crap. Other ones going, yeah, they re work really well, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, you know, so it was really quite confusing. It wasn't when, when I went to, I went to one trailer place and they were really helpful. They rang their Elko rep who said, yeah, yeah, we do a, you know, a conversion kit. It all bolt on, not a problem. I go, well, finally, someone who knows what they're talking about. So the kit includes a caliper, um, the mounting kit includes, doesn't include the caliper, you've got to buy it separately. The, the mounting kit includes a bracket to bolt 
onto the same spot as what your original 12 inch five stud backing plate mounts onto. Um, as a spacer to take up the thickness of the factory or your, your welded on uh, mounting flange and some wheel bearings also in the kit and mounting hardware to mount this bracket onto the um, the drum brake mounting flange. Uh, oddly enough it doesn't include um, the mounting bolts for the caliper so you're going to be have to be making sure you purchase some of those. There are 7 16 UNF inch and a quarter inch and a half depending how thick a washer you use to mount them. Um, so a bit about the caliper. The caliper itself has a 7 16 banjo fitting on a uh, brass block that is threaded with a 3 16 inverted flare um, hydraulic fitting or brake line fitting. They come as left and right mounted. As you can see there's a right symbol on there and the other one will have a left symbol. And when they mount on the van they actually mount vertically. So this is a right hand side uh, so on the back side of the axle shaft which you will see once I get it all mounted onto there. So you might ask whether there's actually a weight saving to be had to um, make it more worthwhile to change over to electric over hydraulic disc brakes? And the answer to that is no, not really. Uh, there's probably a weight of this and there's probably a grand total of six to seven kilos per axle weight saving. So there, um, that's not really gonna be much of a reason to change over to disc at all, uh, but you know, it's still a weight saving, I guess. Now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove your old um, brake drum, your backing plate, clean it all up, make sure there's no uh, rust or scale behind the back of this drum brake mounting flange. Uh, clean all your grease off your, um, your stub shaft, make sure it's all nice and clean, not burnt up, your, your lip seal area is good, but that's all basic maintenance stuff. You're here to watch what's going to take to fit this all up. So this bracket is going to mount on the rear side of your axle and pick up on this hole, that hole, that hole, and the other hole around the other side to um, to hold it in place. So we'll put some bolts in there just to sit there like so. Now you're probably going to want to lock tight these bolts when you put them uh, put it all together but you want to dry fit it first to make sure that it is actually all going to line up now as you can see that bracket sits with that and this is the rear of my camper so, that. so that's the mounting bracket mounted up now you can see this is the rear heading that way of my camper um, that being the front so the bracket comes around picks up on four out of the five holes. Uh, swinging around in the back, see if we can get a view from there. Right, um, and mounts on the back side of the mounting flange for the original, or if you already had, electric drum brakes on there. Now, my van is mounted for some reason, which is probably good, a thicker backing plate mounting flange, which meant it's also larger in diameter, which meant this the caliper and the spacer plate that they give you fouled on the mounting flange. So I had to neatly grind the flange away a little bit so this could sit in position. Otherwise the caliper, I could have spaced it out, but the caliper didn't sit centered over the rotor. So once we've got this all bolted up, we're right to fit the caliper up. But first of all, we should slide on our disc rotor assembly or disc hub assembly. Um, I find this easier to do this all dry so there's no um, grease and everything to get in your bearings and stuff. Get dirt in your bearings if you've got grease in there. Just makes it easier to pull on and off this stuff doesn't uh, line up properly like I had with this once I first bolted it all on. Then I found that the caliper wouldn't sit centered properly over the rotor. So let's go ahead and we'll slide this rotor on. Now I've slid the hub 
rotor assembly on the stub shaft of the van. Uh, I've just got it loosely done up there, make sure there's no slot backwards and forwards. Um, so it's, I know it's seated well. You need to check that your actual uh, what machinings for your bearings are gonna be right. And you'll normally find that if they're incorrect that your, where your lip seal runs, uh, you'll find this won't be lining up properly and that looks to be fine. That's the first indication things are gonna go to crap when you go to actually put everything on. Uh, thing to note, uh, it, these come with UNF studs, half inch to be precise. So if you're like me and you run a mag wheel that requires a special nut, uh, you'll have to change them over uh, and order them separately. I've just pressed the ones out of my old drums and pressed these in and, and not a problem. The other thing is uh, I run Ford uh, Ranger wheels on mine. So this has a 108 millimeter bore um, mounting flange originally, well, maybe 110, uh, but I've machined it down to the 93.1, which is what the Ford Ranger PX2 runs, uh, just to make it easier. So I've got the same wheels and everything. Now, you can see how the caliper is going to sit inside of here. Um, we'll go ahead and bolt that up and just make sure everything's going to sit sweet on that. Here we have it. The caliper bolted up, the rotor on, to give you an idea of how it all sits. So this caliper sits on the rear side of the rotor, this being forward, that being rearwards. This is on the left-hand side of the van. Um, now, the caliper is a vertically mounted rearward caliper. This is a good and bad thing. It stops the caliper from getting blasted with rocks, getting your bleed nipples and all that sort of stuff damaged that when it sits on this side. Uh, when it sits over on the front side, it will be best, I think, to have a caliper that sat topwards, like a, a lot of the um, uh, Kodiak ones and bits and pieces that you get, uh, due to the fact that the dirt, um, and I know this from having a 70 series with disc brakes, Land Cruiser, the rear calipers sit behind the rotor, and it actually causes the dirt, comes along your drive, the dust comes up, and gets caught up in here, and gravity, um, sort of takes effect if it um and hold it doesn't take effect but the the dust gets caught between the caliper and the rotor and stays there and can't fall out where if it's actually sitting on top the dust falls down before it gets to the brake rotor but you know that's got to be this way to allow the handbrake to function properly now the handbrake has that requires the cable to be fitted over this notch and slot now you're going to have to slide your saddles up cable saddles up right tight otherwise it can actually roll off and come off really easily and this is only temporarily set up because i need a new cable as you can see um, but it just pulls on the cable with the cable pulling it it just pulls forward and which then pushes the calipers out uh, caliper pads out and locks the brake on for your park brake assembly now I've just put some shop air in the fitting here just to center this so you can see that it's nice and centered across the rotor. You don't want any of this frame rubbing on here. Um, that's one thing you've got to check, just make sure it's all good. Your caliper is actually sitting right, so you want to have a look that your pads aren't riding right off the edge. Now, in this case, mine are riding a little bit off the edge. Uh, this isn't probably going to be um, too much of an issue. It just means that it's not quite spaced perfectly. If it was a car, I'd probably be worried about it and I would slot the holes and lower it in or make a new bracket. But it's a it's a van, it's only off by half a mil. So that'll be fine. Um, you know, I think it'll be okay. So we'll do a part two on installing the actuator and the brake lines and also running the new handbrake cable once I get that sorted. Just to finish this off, now once you've unbolted this, pack your wheel bearings full of grease, uh, sit it all back on there, make sure you use Loctite on all the threads. You'll need two 9 16 spanners for, um, to do these mounting plate uh, bolts up and a 5 8 ring spanner or socket with with some Loctite on all the threads as I said just to make sure it keeps it on there nice and safe okay